Human growth hormone is a large, complex protein molecule made up of 191 amino acid building blocks. It's produced in the pituitary gland, a peanut-sized organ in the base of the brain. Scientists first began to focus on the growth hormone in the early 1940s as they struggled to understand and help a group of children of abnormally short stature who were unable to grow. They learned that injecting the children with ground-up pituitary gland harvested from cadavers could stimulate new growth in the children. What they couldn't have imagined at the time was that some of the children of the 1940s, growing up as the leading edge of the boomer generation, would latch on to HGH for a very different purpose that's both illegal and harmful. This small segment of aging citizens in search of a fountain of youth is now supporting the underground sale of some two billion worth of HGH-related products a year in the United States in hopes that these products will help maintain youthfulness and promote longevity. The global market is estimated to be about 64 billion a year and it includes the exercise and fitness industries, designer beverages and foods, vitamins and supplements, cosmetics and cosmeceuticals, and plastic and cosmetic surgery. This is how it all started. In 1990, the New England Journal of Medicine quite innocently reported on a study of 21 men, aged 61 to 81, with low levels of a chemical precursor of human growth hormone, who were therefore viewed to be deficient in HGH. Twelve of the men received injections of HGH and nine were untreated as controls for a six-month period. At the end of the six months, a variety of tests were performed, revealing that those receiving the injections had a 14% decrease in fatty tissue and a 9% increase in lean body mass and a 1.6% increase in bone density. Now, there were problems with the study, the small numbers, the short period of observation with limited opportunity to observe side effects, and the absence of double-blind design, which would have given injections to all, some with and some without HGH. And those objections were clearly noted in an editorial that accompanied the original article as it appeared in the New England Journal of Medicine with this caution, quotes, because there were so many unanswered questions about the use of human growth hormone in the elderly and in adults with growth hormone deficiency, its general use now or in the immediate future is not justified, close quotes. Now, apparently, a wide range of traditional and new media health marketers weren't closely following the experts' words of caution. The original author, Dr. Mary Lee Vance, wrote 13 years later that this single article incited a proliferation of anti-aging clinics and lay publications extolling the benefits of growth hormone in reversing or preventing aging. What do we know today about HGH? Well, first, that as part of a normal aging process, HGH begins to decline at about age 40 in humans. Numerous studies since 1990 have confirmed that if you give HGH to older individuals, they do achieve modest increases in muscle mass and bone density, as well as decreases in body fat. But studies also confirm that the drug does not increase muscle strength, functionality, or cellular metabolism. What's more important is that one quarter to one half of those on the injection develop diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, symptoms of arthritis, tissue edema, or carpal tunnel syndrome as complications. There's considerable question as well whether inciting cellular growth at a time when it naturally slows down may inadvertently increase the risk of cancers like breast and prostate cancer. And then there are the animal studies which show that lifespan goes up and tumor incidence goes down with drops in growth hormone. In 2006, there were an estimated 100,000 illegal U.S. Internet purchases per year, as well as 213,000 prescriptions written for HDH in the U.S., 30% or more of which have been written for non-approved purposes such as to combat aging or enhance athletic performance. But with boomers on the roll, 
it's hard to get the cat back into the bag. Current editor of the New England Journal of Medicine, Dr. Jeffrey Drazen, stated recently that, quotes, if people are induced to buy a human growth hormone releaser on the basis of research published in the journal, they're being misled, close quotes. The National Institute of Aging, the U.S. Senate Special Committee on Aging, the GAO, Scientific America, and the AARP have all raised the alarm as well. So, if you're a boomer or related to one, take heed of these wise words from Mayo Clinic's geriatrician, Paul Takashashi. Quotes, it's possible that human growth hormone could allow people to be a little bit better for a little bit longer. The question is, at what price? I think it could be a pretty high price. Close quotes. For Health Commentary, I'm Mike McGee.